It's been about two years since the original ROG Ally was released, and my initial impressions of it back then was that it just had too many things wrong with it. It had better performance than the Steam Deck, and the 120 hertz LCD panel is still really awesome, even compared to something like a Steam Deck OLED, which is obviously OLED and has a 90 hertz screen. But my issues with it, at least back then, were that its ergonomics were a bit to be desired, being that the grips on either side were pretty flat, and the battery life was pretty poor with the measly 40 watt hour battery. The micro SD card issue where the hot air that exited the top of the device being right next to the SD card slot caused a lot of SD cards to die. Asus's response to this was less than ideal, but you could send your device in with the dead SD card and apparently they would do something about it. In July of 2024, the ROG Ally X was released, improving on pretty much everything, including improved ergonomics, and even increasing the system memory from 16 gigabytes to 24 gigabytes, allowing users to allocate even more memory to the GPU, which helps with performance in a lot of games. Also included is a one terabyte SSD and an 80 watt hour battery, which literally doubles the storage capacity and the battery life compared to the previous model. Fast forward to now, I picked up this Ally a few months ago from Best Buy in fair condition for $350. I'm sure you could snag one of these on Facebook Marketplace for even cheaper now. I've seen Z1 Extreme models go for as low as about $300 on there from time to time. Either way, at around that price, I think it's a steal. I wish I had taken more pictures of it when I got it because it was absolutely disgusting. I'm shocked that they sold it to me in the shape that it was in. The back was all discolored and dirty, but the plastic film was still on the front, triggers, and screen. A quick wipe down with a microfiber cloth and some Windex and it was all good. To be fair, it was sold to me in fair condition, which is why it was so cheap. No box, no accessories, just a Ziploc bag. But that didn't matter since I have a ton of USB-C cables and enough chargers at this point. I guess the idea behind buying this was that I didn't have a Windows-based handheld or something with a Z1 Extreme in it. And at the price that I paid, I figured it was worth a shot to see what I'd get for 350 bucks. Speaking of Windows, I lasted all of maybe a couple days using, updating, and dealing with Windows on this thing before I decided to ditch it in favor of Linux, Bazite to be more specific. And after I switched, I started to like my Ally even more. Granted, I was still in the honeymoon phase with it, and Part of the fun of this for me is the tinkering. The first game I tried playing on this was actually Monster Hunter Wilds, since that was what had just come out when I picked this thing up. And it did run, but it wasn't super great. As a longtime Monster Hunter fan, I was really hoping for more performance and I'm kind of sad to see how heavy of a game Wilds is compared to the past titles. I can confidently say that Rise and Worlds will play great on the Ally, no problem. But since I was on the hunt, <laughs> hunt for a Monster Hunter game to play, I actually ended up picking up Monster Hunter Stories since I'd never played it before. The game is basically rock, paper, scissors with different types of fire, water, ice, etc., similar to Pokemon. And I believe this game was on the 3DS. So it's not super hard to run, but it was a lot of fun for the 10 or so hours that I played. That's the fun thing about handhelds that I really like. Sometimes those big AAA games don't work the best, but there are so many good games out there that do. I think things like the Ally or the Steam Deck are so valuable for helping you get through or experience some older games or some indie titles that you otherwise wouldn't want to play sitting at a desk. If this thing was more expensive, I get why it wouldn't really do it for you. Like, if you paid $700 or $1,000 on a nice handheld, only to be let down by the performance, I totally get why you wouldn't like it. But for around $350, getting something like this to just kick back and play some fun games on, or maybe even tinker with and get some emulation running on it, seems pretty cool to me.
Now let's talk about some of the things that I did to my ally to make it more of a me project. I couldn't just buy this thing and do nothing with it to make it better, right? Just to preface all of this, if you decide to mod your ROG ally, do so at your own risk. A lot can go wrong, so do your research and figure out if doing modifications is right for you before cracking one of these open. So 512 gigabytes of storage is pretty small, right? That's what comes in the original ROG Ally. I decided to upgrade to a two terabyte SSD. That'll satisfy pretty much anyone's needs for more storage. I initially got one of those M.2 adapter thingies. You can install a regular sized M.2 drive in here, but in combination with the other mod that I'll talk about in a second, I didn't feel super comfortable doing them both since the cable from the one got in the way of this M.2 adapter thing from sitting correctly. Plus the metal bits hanging over where the battery connects to the main board didn't give me a lot of confidence. I ended up going with one of the smaller SSDs like what the Ally and the Steam Deck both come with. And it wasn't really that much more, maybe like $20 or so. Also, another reason why the longer SSD didn't work was because I bought a TimeTech SSD that had a fat heatsink on it, which I've seen people do online, but maybe the one that I picked up was a little too beefy. Basically, the back wouldn't go on, so I changed my mind on all of that. Next, we can talk about the other really big upgrade, which is the bigger 74 watt hour battery that I installed. Since I started making this video, JSOX actually released or is close to releasing their mod kit that allows you to upgrade your battery to a 65 watt hour battery. This looks to be a much cleaner way of doing what I did, albeit with slightly less capacity. But if you wanna avoid the jank, this actually might be a solid option. The kit also appears to come with some stuff to help with thermals, which is also pretty cool to see. The battery that I got came in this nice kit that came with all of the tools and stuff that you'll need to make the swap. There's no replacement bracket that the battery sits in, so it kind of more or less friction fits in here, which I haven't seen any issues with using this thing over the course of a few months. But the biggest pain point about doing this mod is the modifications that you have to do to the shell of the Ally. You probably saw the flush cutters that were in the battery kit. You use those to trim the plastics away to make room on the back shell as well as a few other places on the main shell of the Ally. This isn't sponsored or anything, but I asked Handheld DIY if they'd like to send over some of their replacement back plates for me to just see if it would make it easier for me to do this mod, and they said, sure. I even asked them if I could modify them, and they were chill with it. So thanks to them for sending these over. I think the purple looks really cool. And they also sent over one for the Steam Deck as well. These are really cool, even if you don't want to do a bunch of mods like I'm doing here. Anyway, it looks like some of the reinforcing plastic here kind of gets in the way of the new battery. So I won't be using their backplate for this project. But if you did want to grab a backplate from them, just so that you can modify that instead of the original shell, that might be a good option too. Hello there, welcome to my mother's basement. After I realized that I did not do any B-roll of the Breed Gaming grip, I decided that I would put the backplate on. Uh, I'm not saying it's not bulging. I'm not saying the battery's bulging. I'm saying the way that I modified it, I could probably modify it just ever so slightly more and it may fit even better. Um, I didn't really have to force it too much, but I think it looks great. I'll get some B-roll of what it looks like without the grip on it, but um, yeah. Thanks for sending this over, Handheld DIY. I appreciate you. I'm gonna go play some more Frog Gun. Frog Gun. Another thing that I picked up for my ally was this Breed Gaming. What a terrible name. This Breed Gaming Comfort Grip that just snaps onto the ally to add a bit more to hold onto, since the ally is kinda flat. Like, it doesn't have a ton to hold onto, but because of that, I feel like it's a bit more sleek. Holding the Ally did take me a bit to get used to coming from the Steam Deck, which is way more comfortable to hold in my opinion. My hope was that this grip would make it a bit more comfortable to hold without putting a case on it. 
My verdict on this one though is that um, it's not great. I just don't like how it feels, and I feel like I should have gone with something like a mod case from JSOX instead. I've tried the mod case before on a friend's device, and I think it was a lot more comfortable to hold, while also adding the front cover to the equation so you could just throw it in your bag and it protects the screen without having to buy a carrying case if you don't want to. I'd highly suggest you pass on this grip, but if you have big hands and you think you need it, it might be worth a try for you. Speaking of a carrying case, I wanted something that I could throw any of my current or future handhelds in, so I bought this sling bag from TomTok. I took it with me while I was traveling a few weeks ago, and it was really nice. It has all the pockets and things for like my AirPods, chargers, cables, and anything else that I'd want to have with me while I'm traveling, and I don't want to lug around a big backpack or something. It feels well made, and I like it a lot. But back to the Ally. Now that I've satiated my desire to mod this thing, how is it to use now? For starters, the battery life is pretty close to double, which is kind of crazy. For a little while while I had the stock battery in this, I felt like I always needed to be near a charger. I know for some people that's actually not even close to being a deal breaker, but for me, I kind of want to use this wherever and whenever. So not worrying about the battery life is actually pretty sick. The one thing I will say about this mod, and I'm not sure if it's my battery or if it's a normal thing for this mod in particular, but my battery won't charge all the way to 100%. And it sits around like 98%. To fix that, or what I decided to do to fix it, was set the battery charge limit in handheld daemon to 95%. So when it hits that, it shows that it's fully charged. Not sure what the long-term effects of that will be for now, but I'm not missing the 5% battery life considering how much life I've added by adding the new battery already. But I figured out if I go into Windows and charge it, it actually charges all the way to 100%. So I'm not sure if it's the charger that I'm using or what, but uh, I just wanted to note it. I guess I should mention the added weight that comes along with adding a much bigger battery than this thing was originally designed for. Yes, it's heavier, and sometimes I notice it when I'm playing for longer sessions, but personally, it's not a deal breaker for the amount of juice and playtime that I get now. Like I mentioned, I chose Bazite for my main OS, which has been sort of my go-to for gaming on Linux. It's everything I need it to be and more, and it's pretty user-friendly. I can confirm that it's been working great, and the addition of handheld daemon, which comes bundled with the installation, it's great for setting the colors around the joysticks or tweaking the fans to your desired level of performance. Obviously, if you choose a manual fan curve, it can make the fans louder, but I prefer to use the fans in manual modes to give it a bit more headroom at the expense of noise. I added Deki Loader so I could install CSS Loader and Steam Grid DB to help me tweak some of the visuals as well, just to make it a little different from my Steam Deck. I do want to note that when plugging and unplugging from a dock, sometimes the scaling of the UI gets a little wonky, so I have to mess with it occasionally. Actually, what I did initially was install Windows 11 using the recovery tool built into the BIOS. Once that was installed and done, I partitioned the drive so that 500 gigabytes was available to Windows, while whatever was left was dedicated to Bazite, where I will be spending most of my time. It's nice to have Windows installed just in case I need Windows for something that Linux can't do, or if I need it at my workbench and I just need a Windows machine without having to set up a whole PC. I even followed a guide to add Windows as a non-Steam game in game mode, where it uses a script to restart the Ally and boot right into Windows without having to go into the BIOS and select which partition to boot from. I'll leave a link to the guide that I followed below in case you want to do something similar. Before I talk about what it's like to actually game on this thing, I want to kind of touch on some other uses for the Ally that I wasn't originally anticipating. At my workbench at home, I like to use it as sort of a mini PC with a dock to put something up to watch while I'm working on a project, or recently I used it to help rip my Wii U games to back those up to use for emulation. And since I don't have a laptop at the moment, I'm actually using it to run my teleprompter. This wasn't a pain in the butt at all. I need a laptop. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. I'm using like, I'm pausing it and playing it with the right bumper. <laughs> it's, it's working. It's not, it's not bad. 
I still need a laptop. <laughs> I feel like if you're in need of something like a mini PC that you can just throw in your bag or whatever to take with you, I think that at the price that I paid, this isn't a bad choice. Plus, obviously, you have all of the added benefit of it being a gaming device with the dedicated control slapped onto it. Finally, let's talk about some gaming. If you've watched any videos about the Ally, it's not going to perform any different than any other Ally out there. So what I'd like to do, instead of giving you an in-depth analysis of a bunch of games, I'd like to just tell you my experience and what it's like to play games on here. Also, just as an FYI, I'm going to be using Bazite for all of these games. Oblivion Remastered plays really well on here at medium settings and 900p resolution, especially when you're in a cave or dungeon. When you go into the more open areas, it tends to slow down quite a bit. That's probably why the game defaults all of the settings to low. But when it works, it looks really good on here. When I was recording some of the footage, my game did decide to hang and freeze, so I had to do a hard reset. I'm going to chalk this one up to the Bethesda jank that we all know and love. I never realized how much I played of this game back in the day until I hopped back in and started playing this version of it. Definitely would recommend. It's a good, it's a good game. When I first got my ally, I was super into Balotro. Not so much these days, but Balotro is one of those games you can hop in at any time and get obsessed all over again. Obviously this game plays great on most devices, but I know a great device to play Balotro on it when I see it, and it's this thing. Similarly to Balotro, and like I mentioned earlier, I played about 10 hours or so of Monster Hunter Stories on the Ally. It's not a demanding game by any means, but it, like many other games that deserve your attention, isn't the most graphically intensive. Just like one of my favorite games of all time, Stardew Valley. Another great game that I always come back to that runs great here on the Ally. And Vampire Survivors too. They've added a ton of content since I put it down and I have a ton of catching up to do. Corekeeper is another game that I played a bunch of in the past and with the help of a good friend, we're getting back into it. I play pretty much only on my PC, but it runs really great here on the Ally. If you want something fun and challenging to play with up to eight friends, I highly recommend Core Keeper. But back to maybe some more graphically intensive games. I think Baldur's Gate 3 is probably my favorite game of all time. 720p, medium settings, quality FSR 2.2 enabled. The TDP mode in Handheld Daemon is set to turbo. I'm seeing an easy 60 FPS in the early game. Walking around in part of the city in Act 3, when the game starts to get much harder to run, I'm seeing it get as low as 40 FPS. But even at that lower frame rate, the game still feels smooth thanks to this VRR display. Fallout 4 is a great example of something that looks great and performs really well here. Since I'm using Linux, this game just thinks I'm using a Steam Deck. So it uses the Steam Deck preset, which makes this game run super well. So if you wanted to play pretty much any of the Fallout games, you'd have a pretty good time on the Ally. Spider-Man Remastered is a fun one that I haven't played in a bit. Medium settings, FSR on, this game looks and feels great. Turning on Framgen makes it an even smoother experience, but that's totally a preference thing. Even without it, it looks and plays great. To wrap things up, would I say it was worth modding an ROG Ally? Sure, I had a ton of fun tinkering and setting it up to satisfy my needs and wants for a mod project, and for a versatile handheld that I can take anywhere and do just about anything with, like use it to run my teleprompter. <laughs> Was not anticipating doing this. This is what I'm doing. Hopefully this video inspired you to do something similar. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you found this video informative or entertaining, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel to help it grow. That's all for this video. Have a great week or month or six months or however long it takes me to make another video. See you later. Go mod something, go have fun. Go tear something apart and rebuild it. Go put a two terabyte SSD in something.